Thank you, Nancy. Hello and good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. I see we have participants from as far away as India, China, Turkey, Angola, huge range of people here today, as well as people closer to Cambridge. Thank you for taking the time to attend this Cambridge English webinar from teacher to trainer and beyond. My name is Monica Poulter, Teacher Development Manager for Cambridge English Language Assessment, and I'm here today with my co-presenter. Hi, I'm Alan McKenzie, Director, uh, Academic Director at Nile, the Norwich Institute for Language Education. For those of you not familiar with Nile, we're the UK's biggest provider of professional development courses for teachers, trainers and other education professionals on a global scale. We're very happy to be presenting the new Cambridge English Trainer Framework to you today. It's been a year in development in collaboration with a group of highly experienced Nile trainers and this webinar launches this exciting new framework. Let's look at the overall structure of the webinar to start off. First, we'll give you a bit of background on why we developed the framework. Then we'll look at the structure and content of the framework. We'll look in detail at the stages of development, the categories and the descriptors in the framework. Then we'll discuss how you can use the framework to aid your own development as a trainer. Yes, we'll look at how you can use the framework to create a development plan and we'll let you know what resources are available from both Cambridge English Language Assessment and Nile to enable you to achieve your development goals. Finally, at the end of the webinar, we'll answer questions you might have about the framework. So Monica, first of all, why did Cambridge English Language Assessment think it was important to develop a framework for trainers? Well, as many of you will know, we've already developed the Cambridge English Teaching Framework. Here it is on the screen, and you can also see this on your handout. It's a grid which describes the skills teachers need in five categories at four different stages. Foundation, Developing, Proficient and Expert. Teachers use it to see where they are now in their development and where they can go next. Let's have a quick look to see how many of you are familiar with the teaching framework. Use your poll button to say yes or no. Here's the question again. Are you familiar with the Cambridge English teaching framework? Use your poll button under the chat box to say yes or no. It looks like we have about 60% familiar and 55% and 45% unfamiliar with it. So quite a few of you are familiar with the Cambridge English Teaching Framework. So here's another question, which you'll also find on your handouts. At which stage do you think teachers begin to move from teaching to being involved in teacher training? What do you think? Answer by using the poll buttons. Is it A, the foundation stage? B, the developing stage, C, the proficient stage, or D, the expert stage? Here's the question again. At which stage do you think teachers begin to move from teaching to being involved in teacher training? Is it A, the foundation stage, B, the developing stage, C, the proficient stage, or D, the expert stage? So a few of you are saying expert and developing, very small number, 9% are saying foundation stage, but the bulk of you, uh, about 57%, are saying uh, the proficient stage. You can see that the teaching framework describes an expert teacher as one who actively supports the development of other teachers, but it also says that teachers at the proficient stage can support other teachers. So we know that many teachers who are at the proficient stage progress from teaching to becoming involved in some form of teacher training and also some people below that level as well. This transition from teacher to trainer often takes place without any kind of formal training or support. It's just taken for granted that a good teacher will be a good trainer. But the skills involved in training are significantly different from teaching and we realised that we didn't know of any kind of framework which described training competencies in detail or which outlined development stages for trainers. The new trainer framework parallels the teaching framework and helps teachers to identify the specific competencies needed to become a trainer. 
It's also designed to help trainers reflect on where they are in their professional career and enable them to think about how they can continue their development. We started by thinking that the trainer framework would look similar to the teaching framework but with different stage and category titles. Like the teaching framework, the trainer framework would have the stages across the top of the table and the categories down the side. But the question was what these stages and category titles should be. As we mentioned earlier, while there's been a lot of research into teacher development, there's been very little about trainer development. Because of this, we didn't have a research base to draw on to build the trainer framework. So we decided to work with Niall to develop a description of trainer development, drawing on the many years of expertise built up among the Niall training team. Yes, that's right. There are many job descriptions and specifications for minimum standards for trainers, often heavily admin based, focusing on record keeping or reporting. There are also a number of descriptions of good training practice and case studies of individual trainers. But what we were interested in was how trainers develop skills over time. And there's very little research on this. We wanted a trainer framework which describes trainer skills and competencies at different stages of development. But what skills do trainers need? Monica mentioned that training skills are not the same as teaching skills, so we decided to take a little time to think about this, because we know that there are some similarities which sit alongside the differences. Let's see what you think. What are the similarities between training and teaching? In what ways are training and teaching the same? Type your answers in the chat box. Here's the question again. In what ways are training and teaching the same? Type your answers into the chat box. Yeah, lots of you are mentioning uh, motivation. Being able to help teachers to write lesson plans, being supportive. Having good language knowledge. Uh, working with the specific needs of your trainers. So there's lots of ideas coming in there and many of your responses are very similar to ours. <clears throat> so trainers need to know the development needs of their trainees. They also need to understand the groups and individuals beliefs and motivations. And then they need to build on what participants already know and can do by constructing a series of learning activities to enable them to develop their knowledge and skills. Finally, as with learners, trainers need to be able to assess whether trainees have attained appropriate stages of skill achievement. Now let's consider the differences between training and teaching. How do you think trainer skills are different from language teacher skills? Type your answers into the chat box. So here's the question again. We want you to think now about how trainer skills are different from language teacher skills. So put your answers in the chat box now. Yes, yeah, some of you have mentioned that teaching adults is uh, very different from teaching children, which many, many mm. teachers will do. They'll be teaching younger learners. Having a stronger knowledge of evaluating and assessing. Uh, leadership skills mm -hmm. is interesting. Being able to develop presentation skills among teachers. Some, again, a lot of your answers coincide with ours. <clears throat> Enabling teachers to understand complex ideas and new methodologies can be very different from explaining grammar or raising awareness of vocabulary differences, for example. The way that teachers develop teaching skills uh, has parallels with language development but is significantly different. Being able to correct learner error is not the same as having a number of different strategies for doing this and knowing when each can be used appropriately. And although both teachers and trainers have to plan sessions and courses, the course content and types of activities involved can be very different. While many language teaching activities are focused on enabling learners to use new language features, Trainers are tasked with raising teacher awareness of new practices and enabling teachers to change their teaching behaviours to suit. Trainers also need to be able to hold developmental discussions with teachers 
including pre- and post-observations. This is an area that requires great sensitivity on the part of the trainer. Indeed, dealing with conflict is another set of skills that trainers need to develop. What do you do when the teachers you're training disagree with you? Another common issue is that teachers will justify their current practice as being effective enough and may often resist changing anything they do. Finally, while teachers and trainers do need access to teaching resources, trainers need additional access to training resources. Whereas most resources for teachers focus on how you can teach language more effectively, in Tessa Woodward's Teacher Training Journal, for example, the articles are written from the view of a teacher trainer and look at how trainers can enable teacher change more effectively. This kind of information is invaluable to trainers. So thinking about trainers' skills and competencies, which categories would you include as general areas that trainers need developing over time? Write your suggestions in the chat box. So once more, here's the question. Think about what categories you think we should include as general areas to for trainers to develop over time. Write your suggestions in the chat box. So management skills. Being innovative, how to make the class uh, as interesting as possible. So professional development. Observation. Knowing your methodology <clears throat> and giving feedback and counselling. Yeah, and reflection. So lots of the there are lots of suggestions here and you'll see in a moment that some of the categories you mention are the same as the ones we have decided on for the trainer framework. Following consultation and discussion with a great many trainers and expert consultants around the world, these are four of the five categories in the trainer framework. What do you think the missing one is? Type your suggestions in the chat box now. So here's the question again. What do you think the missing category is? Type your suggestions in the chat box, please. It's a suggestion of management and self-evaluation. Leadership, mentoring and assessing. Adapting material, planning, teaching styles, planning again, planning coming up quite mm. a lot, adding planning, content. Indeed, yes. Yes, as many as you predicted, the third category is about uh, training sessions and courses, the competencies involved in planning, conducting and evaluating them. So these are the five categories which reflect the competencies needed by teacher trainer. Knowing who you are training and the situation they work in, being able to access relevant knowledge and skills to then plan and deliver a learning programme for teachers, evaluating the learning process and being able to follow it up with support when teachers try to put their new skills into practice, either in the training room or in their own classes. And while doing all of this, being, a, being mindful of how their own training skills and developing uh, their own training values, how those are reflected through their practice. So we have the five categories for the trainer framework. Now let's look at the stages of development that the trainer goes through. We place these along the top of the grid. Consultation, discussions with trainers around the world and a review by expert consultants led us to these three stages of development. First one is from teacher to trainer. This is the stage at which teachers are moving into the role of trainer and they will benefit from some support. The second stage is the autonomous trainer. This stage describes a trainer who has the skills and confidence to be more independent. And finally, lead trainer. This stage describes an accomplished trainer who has the skills to support other trainers. OK, so now we have the categories and the stages. Let's look at some of the descriptors in the trainer framework. Look at this descriptor. Conducts pre-prepared training sessions with given materials and support demonstrates a basic ability to plan, conduct and evaluate teacher training sessions. 
which category do you think this descriptor belongs to? Do you think this is a descriptor for the category A, understanding of individuals and situations, B, knowledge of teaching training and, and teacher development, C, planning, conducting and evaluating training sessions and courses, or D, supporting, observing, feeding back on and assessing teaching? Here's the question again. Which category does this descriptor belong to? Conducts pre-prepared training sessions with given materials and support. Demonstrates a basic ability to plan, conduct and evaluate teacher training sessions. Is it A, B, C or D? And I see about 79% of you think that it's planning, conducting and evaluating training sessions. Small numbers of people think the, the others, but the, the majority of you uh, have the correct answer. It's the descriptor for category C, planning, conducting and evaluating training sessions and courses. Now let's think about which stage the same descriptor belongs to. Is it from A, teacher to trainer, B, autonomous trainer, or C, lead trainer? Decide which stage it fits into. Here's the descriptor again. Conducts pre-prepared training sessions with given materials and with support. Demonstrates a basic ability to plan, conduct and evaluate teacher training sessions. What stage does this descriptor describe? Is it A, B or C? And that's a rather large 85% roughly. Uh, saying from teacher to trainer. So as many of you predicted, this descriptor is the first stage in the trainer framework from teacher to trainer. Because it talks about the trainer using a plan and materials prepared by someone else and being given support. The trainer has a basic ability to plan, conduct and evaluate training sessions. Let's look at the descriptors for the other two stages now. You can see from the first phrases we've highlighted in these descriptors, there's a progression through the levels from delivering training sessions from a pre-prepared training manual through adapting that given material, supplementing or changing some of the activities, to designing your own training materials at the lead trainer stage. Yes, there's also a reference to using pre-prepared materials to address the general needs of a group at the, from teach, at the from teacher to trainer stage, whereas at the lead trainer stage the trainer is more able to deal with individual differences. At the from teacher to trainer stage you need to have more support as a trainer, but as you gain more experience you're better able to act independently to better meet the needs of the training group. And at the lead trainer stage you're able to apply different approaches and create new ways of introducing training materials. Yes, so your ability to plan, conduct and evaluate teacher training sessions starts off at a basic level and builds with experience to a point where you have a clear, coherent approach to what you do, which you're able to explain and justify. As a lead trainer, your approach is mature and flexible. You take into account individual needs of trainees and are considering a lot more factors than you do at the other levels. Let's do a short task here. Let's see where you think you are in your development in this category. Planning, conducting and evaluating training courses, training sessions and courses. Please look at uh, participant task two, assessing your stage on your handout. You can download that now if you haven't already done so. It's in the offers box under the chat box. In relation to the category planning, conducting and evaluating training sessions and courses, which stage would you put yourself at? A. From teacher to trainer. B. Autonomous trainer. Or C. Lead trainer. You can read the full descriptors on your handout. Please vote now to tell us the stage that you think you're at. Here's the question again. Which stage do you think you're at in the framework with regard to planning, conducting and evaluating training sessions and courses. A, from teacher to trainer, B, autonomous trainer or C, lead trainer. Choose an option now. Now that's not surprising really that we've got about 
52% as from teacher to trainer, as most of you identified yourselves as teachers um, in the first poll that we did right at the beginning. Though we do have about a third saying autonomous yeah, trainer right. and uh, around about 16% saying that they're lead trainer level. Now, in order to do this task, you had to self-assess your own training skills, which is important when using the framework. So let's talk about how you can make self-assessment successful. When self-assessing, it's useful to justify your choices to yourself by thinking of concrete examples. For example, think of a time when you actually did what the descriptor says. If you can't, you may want to look at a different stage on the trainer framework. Another useful exercise is to discuss your self-assessed stage with a peer. You may find that having that external perspective leads you to change your self-assessed stage. The purpose of using the framework to self-assess is not to grade you as a trainer, but to help you to see what areas you're proficient in, what you perceive as areas you wish to develop, and so target where you want to focus your development energies. And because the purpose is to self-assess rather than to grade yourself, it's important to be as honest and realistic as possible, rather than try to label yourself as highly on the framework as possible. Acknowledge your strengths, but be true to the descriptors and to yourself. Yes, and an important point to add here is that, like the Cambridge English teaching framework, you can have a jagged profile. You might rate yourself on some categories much higher or lower than on others. Even very experienced trainers might feel less comfortable when, for example, dealing with new training content, working with a group that is uncharacteristic of the groups you usually meet, or when trying out new approaches. I think the points that Alan just mentioned are all useful ways for trainers to push themselves in terms of their own professional development as a trainer. Using the framework to self-assess, identifying areas for development, and then looking at a range of developmental opportunities that they could use to help them develop the skills they need as a trainer. In this way, trainers can set their own development agendas. So what might your development agenda include for the category we've been using as an example? Which particular aspects of planning, conducting and evaluating training sessions and courses do you feel you need to work on as a trainer? Share your ideas with us in the chat box. Here's the question again. Which particular aspects of planning, conducting and evaluating training sessions and courses do you feel you need to work on as a trainer? Write your ideas in the chat box. We've got training sessions, evaluating. Mm -hmm. A lot of you are using the keywords from the descriptor, evaluating, planning, conducting, which is interesting. Um, and many of you are looking at different parts of that. Time management just popped yeah. up there. And evaluating learner needs, evaluating teachers' needs. It's quite mm. a challenging area. And the typical teacher development answer, all of them. <laughs> It's interesting to see the, uh, the different aspects you've come up with, but up to now we've just been looking at the summary descriptors for planning, conducting and evaluating training sessions and courses, but there are also more detailed descriptors for each category. Trainers can use these to be more specific when evaluating their current position and to be clearer about where they can continue to develop. We're going to take a look at examples from the detailed descriptors now for this category, and you may see there are some aspects that you've already mentioned in that last chat, chat box. As you can see, there are three distinct sections in the summary description, planning, conducting, and evaluating training sessions and courses. Within these subcategories, there are detailed descriptors, which give more concrete, specific descriptions of what a trainer at each of these development stages does. Looking at these can help you to self-assess more accurately and better set your development agenda. These are described independently at a deeper level. Let's look at conducting training sessions as an example. Yes, let's look at the stage for from teacher to trainer in relation to this category, planning, conducting and evaluating training sessions and courses. There are seven detailed descriptors in this category and this stage. 
So firstly, when they conduct a training session, trainers should know how to create a training environment conducive to learning, where trainers feel comfortable and positive. Secondly, they're likely to be given training materials to deliver and should be able to deliver those sessions as planned. As a competent classroom teacher, they should have effective classroom management skills, so setting up activities should not be an issue for them and neither should grading their language to the target audience's needs. They'll be able to monitor tasks and keep teachers on task. They'll have an awareness of what's happening within the group and make decisions about how to group participants effectively. They should be able to use the space in the training room appropriately. And finally, it's likely that they'll have an awareness of the need to stimulate critical and creative thinking, but may not have the tools to fully exploit this. Now let's see how two of these descriptors change when looking at the next stage. Take a look at the first descriptor creates a training environment conducive to learning. At the autonomous trainer stage, the trainer knows and uses a large uh, a range of strategies to keep the momentum up over the course of the training. So the difference between the two descriptors is that the autonomous trainer has a range of strategies. Now let's see how the descriptor for the autonomous trainer uses a range of strategies to maintain a positive environment throughout the training changes when we look at the next stage, lead trainer. You can see here that the lead trainer is adept at managing individual and group dynamics and diffuses conflict in the training room. The lead trainer uses group dynamics to maximise opportunities for learning. Now let's look at the second descriptor from the From Teacher to Trainer profile and see how that differs at the autonomous stage this time we'd like you to predict how the descriptor changes. In what way do you think this descriptor, delivers training as planned, will change when used to describe autonomous chain trainers? Type your answer into the chat box. So once again, in what way do you think this descriptor, delivers training as planned, will change when used to describe autonomous trainers? Put your answers into the chat box now, please. Improvises is one answer there. Flexibility. Mm -hmm. Adapts. Adjusts. Very similar. Yep. Flexible in approach. Mm -hmm. um, yes, because they're adapting the given materials, autonomous trainers are more likely to vary the timing and set up of their activities when it seems appropriate to do so, based on the individual differences in the group and the way that the group is interacting. Now let's think about how the descriptor for the autonomous trainer varies timing and setup of activities based on trainee reactions and group dynamics differs at the lead trainer stage. In what way do you think this descriptor will change when used to describe lead trainers? Type your answer into the chat box. So how do you think the descriptor varies timing and setup of activities based on trainee reactions and group dynamics differs at the lead trainer stage. Type your answers now. So we've got um, unpredictable situations coming up that the lead trainer is able to deal with that. Improvising, improvisation. Again, flexibility is coming up. Mm -hmm. Yes, you've got the right ideas. A lead trainer is highly flexible and is able to adapt the session as the need arises to deal with unpredictable situations, as many of you said. So, as you can see by looking at these different stages of development in the Cambridge English Trainer Framework, there is a clear progression. There's also a set of discrete actions and behaviours that characterise each stage. Reflecting on the detailed descriptors can help you to better identify what stage you're at on the framework. And it helps you to set your own development priorities. If you're a school manager, you may want to, and many of you are, as you noted at the beginning, uh, you may want to use the framework as part of your regular professional development cycle. Linking your institutional development aims to the trainer and teaching frameworks can help 
uh, give greater coherence to professional development plans in your organisation. As a trainer, you can use the trainer framework to identify your individual development needs and it's a good idea to plan your development. One way of organising this is to create a development plan with SMART objectives. These are objectives which are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound and which you can evaluate. First use the framework to help you identify a specific training need which is relevant to your situation. It could be, for example, to improve the way you conduct post-lesson discussion with teachers you observe or with trainers who are observing you. Once you've identified an area for development, you need to decide how you will measure whether you've achieved success at developing the area you have identified. Then you need to decide what you'll do to develop in this area and you need to find an activity which is achievable for you. You need to decide when you'll do it and finally you should decide how you will evaluate the effectiveness of the development activity. Let's look now at what one trainer did to develop in the area of giving feedback on lessons. Here's Elena's SMART plan. You can also find this on your handouts. First of all, she used the framework to identify a specific goal that was relevant to her situation, to engage teachers more actively in post-lesson discussion, because she regularly gives feedback to teachers. Then she decided how she would measure success. I will reduce how much I talk and increase how much the teacher talks in the post-lesson discussion. Next, she considered how she'd achieve it by looking at available resources, in this case, a training video. And she said why watching the video would be relevant to her work and her plan. Then she decided exactly when she'd do the activity and what follow-up she'd do. Watch a video of a post-lesson discussion by the end of the month. Write an action plan by the end of the following week. And then she said she'd apply her new learning during her observation in the following months. Finally, Elena considered how she'd evaluate success by asking the teachers she observes for feedback. So we've looked at Elena's SMART plan. Now let's look at part of the video she watched and do one of the tasks Elena did using a clip from the post-session discussion of a lesson. This will give you an example of the kind of thing you can do to develop your skills in giving feedback to teachers. Both the Cambridge English Train the Trainer course and the Nile from Teacher to Trainer course uh, have a number of activities using a filmed lesson and post-session discussion. Here is the task for you to do as you watch the clip. You're going to watch a short clip of a post-lesson discussion between a teacher and trainer. This is from towards the end of the discussion and three things are mentioned that the teacher could work on. Giving instructions, getting the learners to underline parts of the text which support a true-false statement and spending less time in plenary feedback. So watch the video and then use the chat box to answer these two questions. Who suggests these action points? And what do you notice about the interaction between the trainer and teacher? Here are the questions again. Who suggests these action points? And what do you notice about the interaction between trainer and teacher? Write your answers in the chat box after we've watched the clip. Well, in terms of what you might do differently, you might have done differently, uh, you've mentioned the idea of maybe underlining the. Yeah, yeah. The, I think with instructions, items. sometimes I, I should uh, listen to myself beforehand more, you know, because it sounds all clear in my head. But once I start uttering those words, I realize that my instructions are not as clear as I intend them to be. Mm -hmm. So with this um, thing, with the true or false statements, true, um, true or false statements, uh, saying partly the underlining, but partly also please stick to the text. So mm -hmm. find your answers from very simple instructions that I didn't really right. think about. And also... I, I thought you were actually... I, I mean, I just thought you did say that, uh, mm -hmm. perhaps more in the feedback stage. Mm -hmm. but, but okay, yeah. I mean, you've mentioned earlier the idea of actually telling them to go in and underline the things that yeah. support the true or false yeah, sure. uh, uh, statement. And, what, el what else might you have done um, Maybe the, the feedback sections or, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if 
the feedback um, stages were not a bit too long. Mm -hmm. Like, as I've said, I'm used to doing more pair work and feedback would really be feedback that I consider, I consider important or I have heard about when I was walking around monitoring them. Mm -hmm. And so maybe I shouldn't worry about feedback if I've already given a lot of feedback during the pair work. I can see that many of you are writing your answers to the questions, who suggests the action points and what do you notice about the interaction between trainer and teacher. And there are some good answers here. You've noticed that it was the teacher who came up with her own action points. As for the interaction between the trainer and the teacher, you saw that they're sitting side by side and the trainer is friendly and encouraging. And the trainee, the teacher, feels comfortable. His approach has been to ask the teacher to talk about her lesson, occasionally prompting with a question such as, why did you decide to do this? Or did you notice that such and such happened? This encouraged the teacher to give her views first, which will develop her self-awareness. He asked two further questions to round up the session. Can you suggest what they were? Use the chat box to write your ideas. Here's the question again. What two further questions does the trainer ask the teacher? Use the chat box. Asking her to reflect on the lesson. Action from the teacher. What would you do differently next or some of the suggestions that you've got? So yes, most of you have got it right. He asks what she'll do next with the learners and what she'll work on for her general development, not specific to this lesson. Now let's move on to the final part of the webinar in which we're going to talk about activities and resources for teacher trainers. So watching recordings of yourself giving feedback and watching recordings of other trainers giving feedback to teachers is one way to develop as a trainer. And there are many other development activities that you can take part in. Have a look at this list of possibilities. Video observations, developing feedback systems, webinars for trainers, face-to-face -face conferences, peer observations, developing your own training materials, participating in an online teacher or trainer community, taking an online course. We'd like you to tell us which activities you've taken part in in the past year, and we'd particularly like to hear about any activities you'd like to share with other participants, things that you found particularly useful. So type your answers in the chat box now. Here's the question again. Which activities have you taken part in in the past year? Which have you found particularly useful? Type your answers into the chat box now, please. Yes, there are quite a few MOOCs out there that are um, helpful free resources. Face-to-face -face -face sessions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people going to face-to-face -face conferences. Peer observations, it's nice to see that coming up, a lot of you saying that, and video observations. Webinars for trainers, short courses. It's wonderful to see so many of you doing so much. Participating in learning communities, whether online or face-to-face, -face, can be very a very rewarding form of development. You're not only learning how to do things differently and hopefully better, but also taking part in a social event and making new friends. There are many of these out there. We can see that you all know about webinars for trainers since you're already here. And Niall also has a free webinar series. You can access that through our website or by subscribing to our newsletter. And here are some more ways that you can continue your development. Many trainers keep regular blogs about their activities. Consider doing this yourself. Writing about your experiences is a great reflective activity and your experience can be of use to many others. Face-to-face -face meetings of trainers at conferences and seminars is a great way to develop your professional network. If there isn't one in your area, consider organising one. If you're interested in the topic, others will be too. If you have no budget, then offer your school as a venue for a sharing meeting where local trainers come together and talk about their good practices. This is a great way to find out new ideas and stimulate your own thinking about what is worthwhile and possible in teacher training. 
Teacher associations are a great source of communities of language teachers and trainers. IATEFL, Teacher Training and Education Special Interest Group, is a very active and holds its own conferences which you can attend. Many national teaching organisations also have very active special interest groups, known as SIGs, for teacher education and development. The Japan Association for Language Teaching has a particularly active group. Even if these are not in your country, the online discussions they have and resources they make available can be very useful to you in your training situation. We'll send you these links after the webinar. You may have observed teachers teaching, but have you ever observed another trainer training? The experience can be one of the most valuable professional development activities you can do. Inviting other trainers to observe you and give you feedback on your training can be a helpful way of breaking down barriers and stimulating them to do the same for you. These days, with everyone having a video camera on their phones, it's very easy to film training sessions and make them available to other trainers to watch, provided, of course, that you have agreement from the participants to share the material. You could also add these to your blog and show the world what wonderful things are happening in your training sessions. Any form of feedback on your own training is worthwhile seeking out. Consider how you get feedback from participants in your training sessions. Is it a simple satisfaction survey at the end? Those can be a useful indicator of how much the participants enjoyed the training, but it doesn't tell you whether they're going to actually act on the training content. Consider developing your own feedback systems that really uncover how successful the training was in terms of stimulating teacher learning and change. Reading circles are another great way to stimulate discussion and development. Choose an article that you've enjoyed or have questions about. Ask other trainers to read it and arrange a time to sit down and discuss the content in depth. This can be over a tea or a coffee and doesn't have to be on a school premises. The act of processing new information through discussion with others can help you to more easily transfer the ideas in, a, in the article into good practice. Here's another poll for you. Which of the development activities we've mentioned sounds like something you would like to try soon? Choose just one activity that's realistic for you. So <laughs> someone said reading circles is a great idea. So far we've got about 50% of the audience want to come back to the webinar and all the others are kind of equally divided. That's right. Yeah. Writing your own blog is uh, getting quite a few takers. Organising a sharing meeting, a lot of you are, are, are putting that now. And observing others training. It's becoming more popular. Yeah. Yeah. That's about 14-15% looking at observa observing others training. Well, it looks like you're all going to be very busy in the coming months. In addition to these activities, both Nile and Cambridge English Language Assessment have a number of resources that you can access to aid your own professional development. Cambridge English Language Assessment has a number of courses and qualifications you may want to try. These include the Delta, which many teachers who are interested in becoming trainers take, especially if they intend to go on to become trainers on CELTA or ISELT courses. And we also offer short train the trainer courses as a first step into training. Most of these are linked to training on our CELT S and CELT P programmes. For trainers on these courses, we also provide some training sessions for trainers to use with their teachers. And on the Cambridge English website, there are seminars and workshop materials for trainers delivering courses and sessions preparing teachers for Cambridge English qualifications, such as the Teacher Knowledge Test or TKT. Niles from, tra uh, from Teacher to Trainer course is available online and face-to-face, -face, and we have a wide range of courses on other topics that might be of interest to you, including materials development, content language integrated learning, young learners, and English for academic purposes. We run an online Delta and a modular MA programme in professional development for language education, which is the largest of its kind in the UK. 
One of the modules on the MA programme is trainer development, which aims to take you further along your development path as a trainer. See the Nile website for more information and keep a lookout for news on our 21st birthday conference in August. Nile's developing a global database of English language teacher trainers and we're also starting up a Nile training community on LinkedIn. Here you'll be able to connect with all of Nile's expert trainers worldwide, join up yourself or recommend others to join. There are a number of publications for trainers that you might want to access. We've already mentioned Tessa Woodward's Teacher Trainer Journal, which is a great source of up-to-date debates and developments in the field. Some publications also have special editions focusing on teaching and teacher training, such as Studies in Language Testing, a silk vol volume on teacher assessment. We've provided a reference list with some of the best writings on training and trainer development, and we'll send you all the links we've mentioned after the webinar. Thank you for attending the webinar today. We hope you found our introduction to the trainer framework useful. Now we'll pass you back to Nancy, who's going to talk about some more ways that Cambridge English Language Assessment can help you and your learners. And then Alan and I will answer any questions you may have about today's webinar. So please type in any questions you have, and we'll do our best to answer them. Thanks, Nancy. Um, we've had lots of questions coming in, and we'll do our best to um, answer as many of them as mm. possible. So, Alan, would you like to kick off with a question? I think Anna's been asking about what peer means. A peer is anybody who does the same thing as you do. So anybody who is working at the same level, has as much experience, who you think is equal to you on a professional basis. So um, when we talk about peer observation, it's really just getting somebody else in a similar position to you to look at what you're doing. There was another question here about reading circles and what a reading circle is. Um, as I explained, basically, you have a group of people, a circle, who read the same article and you talk about the content of that article within that group. That's a reading circle. They can be, as somebody mentioned here, they were asking about online question mark. Well, yeah, online if you want, but face to face as well. It doesn't really matter how the discussion happens or where the discussion happens. The important thing is that the discussion happens. I've got a couple of interesting questions here that I'd like to pick up on. There's a few questions actually about um, what qualifications you need to become a trainer or how many years experience mm. you need as a teacher before you become a, a trainer. Well, how many years is difficult because you could have, I think Penny Earth said once, you, know, you could spend 20 years doing the same thing or you could do five years having a very rich range of experience. Mm. So I think it's really the range of experience you've had. Generally, I think we'd probably say you know, about f up to five years experience. But as I say, a lot depends on, on the quality of that teaching, on the range, uh, your, on your own development as a teacher before you become a trainer. I think the, qu the key question there is how long does it t take you to become a proficient teacher, doesn't it? And if you can answer that, then you'll know how long it takes. Uh, yes, it well, it's kind of, a, it's all relative, isn't it? Absolutely. Another very interesting question is that can teacher training entirely take place online? Now, there are a lot of online teacher training courses, and I think our own approach at Cambridge English is for a blended option because we feel that that experience in the classroom is so valuable. Um, so I think a lot of te effective teacher training can take place online, but we would always recommend that a practical <coughs> element was included, although we are looking now at options of, of videoing classroom practice and, and mm -hmm. looking at, at teaching and teacher development uh, through videoed observations, which can also be effective. So I think as the technology develops, we may be able to look at a, a teacher training course that's 100% online, but for the moment I think blended is, is our preferred option. Yeah. And uh, Luanne asked an interesting question, how can one motivate teachers who are not motivated or keen to further their development? Luanne, I think that is such a big question that we, be, we would be better to make that the focus of a future webinar. Um, the, the key answer there was to, would be to find out what is it about them that interests them in teaching and use that as a hook to get them motivated to try and uh, encourage them to try different activities in their classrooms to improve their learners performance. No teacher wants to be a bad teacher, everybody wants to be good at what they do. Giving them appropriate tools, activities, resources, getting them to think about their situation to enable them to become better at what they do is what motivates teachers. Mm. 
there's a question here about anxiety, how, how to control anxiety in training teachers. And I'm not quite sure whether, whether it's the trainer's anxiety or the anxiety of the teachers being trained. And maybe it's both. But I think, you know, um, our teacher training courses, and I'm sure Niles as well, mm. begin with very much you know, ice-breaking activities, uh, activities to help people relax and feel comfortable in the training room. The trainer is carrying on learning as well. So I think, you know, any training should be... Um, there should be an element of equality there that the trainer can learn from the teachers and I think most trainers realise that teachers bring a wealth of experience to the training room and that everyone can share mm. and benefit from that but um, yeah I, th I think you know um, if uh, looking at change if, if you're attending a, a training course you're asking people to change and some people embrace change and some people resist mm. it but I think the answer is is to create a, a comfortable training environment in which there's, a, there's an atmosphere of trust and everyone learning together. Mm. And um, there was a last question here about what does jagged profile mean? That's a very good question. Um, it means that for each of the different categories that we had for the um, trainer framework, you might see yourself at a different level at each of those categories. Mm -hmm. So um, for planning, conducting and evaluating training courses, you might see yourself at autonomous level but for um, your knowledge of, um, of, of training and teaching resources, you might feel that you are a bit lower than that. So you're, you can be lower or higher on the framework. You you're, don't expect yourself to be all completely in one, lev uh, one stage of the, the framework for all five categories. There's a question here about what qualities an, an expert teacher possesses. You might have noticed we tried to avoid the word expert on our trainer framework because we felt it kind of set up a, an expectation of uh, too high a level. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting, I was at IATEFL recently and someone mentioned how valuable they found IATEFL to be. And a comment that someone made to me is that they were really surprised to see someone who everyone would regard as an expert trainer a present at sessions you know mm. learning learning himself as a trainer so yeah. I think that's the answer really that expert trainers are people that carry on learning as well yeah. and obviously many other qualities as well but um, no one is ever so expert that they don't need to carry on learning mm. and Sophia the complete train framework is available already on the um, Cambridge Cambridge English language assessment website Some questions about whether you need to have a Delta or an MA to become a trainer. I mean, the route that Cambridge English trainers take is traditionally through Delta, and we realise that that's not an option for, for everybody. So, no, mm. other kinds of in-service training, which are practice-based, will would be um, valid as well. The issue that we had when we were putting together the, um, the, the trainer framework is there are no hard and fast rules about what makes a trainer and what doesn't. In some countries that I've worked in, trainers are just the most senior teachers that are there. But the, as we all know, the most senior teachers are not necessarily the best teachers, are not necessarily the people with the best English language abilities. So um, it really is very much context dependent on what makes a good trainer. There's a question from Anna here, going back to this anxiety issue again, uh, that when you're conducting a training session, how can you control that anxiety? And no matter how well prepared you feel, you still feel nervous. And I think everybody feels nervous in, in any situation where they're in front of a group of people. But one suggestion there could be to try team training so that the focus you know, isn't only on you as a single trainer, that working with mm -hmm. another trainer and co-planning the session together uh, and then delivering the session together will probably mm. relieve some of the anxiety. Absolutely. Paola, you say, is the Delta available online? Yes, Niall runs an online Delta. Please go to the website and find out more about that. Um, Maria, uh, you're retiring and you're thinking about becoming a trainer at the age of 65. Well, if you have the energy and the motivation to do that, go for it, girl. <laughs> Yeah, many of you are asking about are there, are there qualifications for trainers? Um, mm. There are very few, I mean, there are some MAs in teacher training, not very many. Um, for that one, I'd say yeah. watch this space. We're looking at the mm. potential for developing those kinds of qualifications. They don't exist at the moment, and it is a big question who trains the trainers. I noticed that um, earlier on there were some questions in the, the chat box about... Um, uh, is there a, a school for trainers? 
Well, I guess if you're looking for a school for trainers, you'd be looking at places like Nile or Bell or Pilgrims. Um, there are trainer training courses, but there aren't any official qualifications for trainers. Mm -hmm. It is a bit of an issue. We, we do have, um, I mean, Cambridge English has a trainer database and all the people that have trained through our courses are on that uh, tr uh, trainer database. And for the um, CELT S and CELT P, there is a certificate of completion. Mm. But unless we introduce a kind of formal assessment for trainers, it's, it's difficult mm. to actually issue it as a, as a qualification. But we certainly have training procedures and give recognition to trainers who have followed those procedures. And Ishmael asked the question about should pre-service trainers have different skills than in-service ones? That is a very good question, Ishmael, and I'm not entirely sure what the answer to that is. I guess when you're taking, um, when you're training new teachers, teachers who have never been in a classroom before, then there might be a set of knowledge and uh, methodologies, certain skills that they might need that would be different from dealing with experienced teachers. But that's certainly a grounds for a very interesting research project. And one thing we didn't mention in the webinar is we would like to use the trainer, we'd like you to use the trainer framework as a way of asking questions about your context and leading into more research into trainer development. Mm -hmm. How accurate is this as a development framework and do we need to change anything, add anything, adapt it? Uh, we'd be very interested in your input on that. Exactly, yes. I mean, it's, it's very much in its infancy. The other thing I should say is that we will. many of you have asked questions about resources and we mm. will be developing resources to map to the trainer framework. And so just, just watch, uh, watch this space. Uh, this slide, we're probably running out of time here, but I'd like to take one last question, which is from Maria, about a plenary at ITEFL, which focused on native and non-native mm, speaker, Sylvana yeah. um, Richardson's plenary. And uh, what was our opinion on this? Well, absolutely. I mean, we have many, many non-native speaker trainers. I know Silvana doesn't mm. like that term. We have many multilingual, bilingual trainers, um, as opposed to the monolingual trainers, yeah. the impoverished monolingual trainers, many trainers now. And we have courses where in the past, maybe the ratio was uh, native speaker trainers with maybe native speaker trainees. And so that's flipped entirely in some contexts where we have bilingual trainers and um, uh, people who are resident in the country, n not mm. English or Americans or Australians, you know, working as uh, teachers in the country, it's completely flipped. So absolutely, um, we're all in favour. And um, yeah. in fact, we have many, many examples of excellent teacher trainers who are bilingual and also teachers who are bilingual. And at Nile, we are um, L1 blind and we don't care about your nationality. We care about how competent you are as a trainer and as a, a language speaker. And let's face it, we all know native speakers who are not terribly competent at their own language. OK, so I think that's all we have time for. And we have so many questions there. We, we, we answer as many as we can. But thank you very much for attending today. We hope you found it useful. Um, we look forward to your feedback on the framework and we look forward to seeing you at future webinars. And the next webinar coming up is on creating effective lessons with IELTS practice tests. So we look forward to seeing you there. So it's goodbye from us from today. Yeah. Thank you very much.